Hey everyone, I'm Jake from Jake M Media and today we're talking about what's in my camera bag. So this is my first what's in my camera bag ever. I'm super excited and what we'll be going over is everything I carry in my bag on a daily basis. Stuff I leave at home or anywhere else doesn't really count so I won't be covering that as much. With that all said, let's get into the bag. Starting off with the bag itself, I use the Low Pro Tahoe BP150. So this is basically just a travel size camera bag and I got it about two or three years ago when I first got my camera and it's been pretty well for the most part. I've been able to store things like my camera and two or three lenses. However, now that I'm accumulating more gear, I am looking for a new bag to replace this one. But anyways, this bag cost me around 75 bucks when I first bought it. So if you're in the market for a $75 bag, I'd recommend checking out this one. Moving on, we have my main camera and that's the Canon 6D Mark II. I actually don't have this camera yet because I just ordered it about two or three days ago, so I'm still gonna be waiting about a week to get it. It's actually pretty funny, before I ordered the Canon 6D Mark II, I had the Canon 80D for about four months before I realized, wait, I have two full frame lenses, why not just get a full frame camera to go with those? So I sold the Canon 80D about three days ago and right away I bought the 6D Mark II, so I'm just waiting on that still. But from my understanding, the 6D Mark II and the 80D both work pretty much the same way. There's only a few differences between the two, one of those being that the 6D Mark II is a full frame camera and the 80D is an APS-C camera. Anyways, if you're looking for what I paid for the 6D Mark II, I paid around 1200 bucks, but I got it used, so it was a little bit cheaper than a lot of the new ones out there. Now let's talk about my backup camera, which is the Canon SL2. I'm actually shooting on this camera right now, so I can't really show you it in my hands, but I'll play some B-roll over me talking right now. Now I first bought this camera around three years ago when I started getting into photo and video. And in my opinion, it's a really great camera for beginners. Personally, I've used it for a lot of things like professional portrait shoots, YouTube videos, and it got me all the way through college. Anyways, if you're looking for a price on this camera, I bought it for around 700 bucks new about three years ago, but I think you can find some use for even cheaper. All right, now let's move on to the lenses that I used. The first being the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter f 4.5 to 5.6 wide angle lens. This is another piece of equipment that I'm using to shoot right now, so I'll show you more B-roll. This is one of the only wide angle APS-C lenses that you can get out there. There's a few others, but this is just the one I chose. I've used it for things like landscapes, indoor shoots, or really any tight spaces. Anyways, if you're looking to pick up this lens, I got it for around 300 bucks, I think off of Amazon. All right, now I got a piece of equipment that I can actually show you, and it's this Sigma 24-70 to f2.8 lens. This is one of the full frame lenses I was talking about earlier that I'll use with my 6D Mark II. I actually just got this lens over the summer, so I haven't got a whole lot of use out of it, but I've used it for things like portraits, and it's actually replaced my 50mm f1.8. I was using the 50mm for portraits for a while, but once I bought this, it was just a more versatile lens to use on portrait sessions. And that's mainly because on APS-C bodies like the SL2, this 24 to 70 would become a 38 to 110 millimeters. And in my opinion, that's the perfect focal length for most portraits. Now, as far as price, this thing cost me around $1,000. So it's not for everyone. All right, now we'll move on to the next piece of equipment, which is the Sigma 70 to 200 F 2.8 Beast. This lens is huge. It's basically the size of my forearm, just a little bit smaller actually and it's a full frame lens also, just like the last one. I actually got this thing over the summer along with the 24 to 70 I just showed you, and I've used it mostly for portraits, but lately I've been getting into sports photography, and it's been really great for that. In my opinion, this is a really great lens because it gives you such a unique look that you can't really get from any other lens. Anyways, as far as price goes on this monster of a lens, it cost me around 1100 bucks. So just a little bit more expensive than the 24 to 70, but again, it's not gonna be for everyone. All right, let's put that away. Now I guess you can call this next lens an honorable mention because I don't actually keep it in my camera bag 24 seven. And that's actually the 50 mil F 1.8. This is another full frame lens, but you can put it on APS-C bodies, just like the two lenses I showed you earlier. You can use those on APS-C bodies too, but it's gonna multiply the focal length by 1.6. Anyways, this used to be my main portrait lens for a while, 
up until I bought the 24 to 70, which covers that 50 millimeter focal length. Now this is a great portrait lens for both full frame and APS-C bodies. On full frame, it's gonna stay a 50 millimeter at f1.8, but on APS-C bodies, it's gonna go up to an 80 millimeter at, so you take 1.8 and multiply it by 1.6, and you get 2.88. So on APS-C bodies, a 50 millimeter f1.8 will actually be an 80 millimeter f2.8. So either way, with this lens, you'll still get professional grade portraits. Now here's my final point about this lens. I think everyone should have it, mainly because it's a great low light lens, it's really affordable, it's really small, and it's a pretty versatile focal length at 50 millimeters or even 80 millimeters on APS-C bodies. So if you want to pick up this lens, it costs around 120 on Amazon, I think, but you can probably find it used for even cheaper. All right, now onto the next piece of equipment I have in my camera bag. It's the Zoom H1N Handy Recorder. The Zoom H1N is a unidirectional condenser sound recorder, and I've used it for a lot of stuff. Things like YouTube, I used it in college, I used it for ambient and white noise in the past, and even sound effects. Honestly, this is a great beginner mic if you don't know where to look, because you can use it for a lot of different things. However, there is one thing that upsets me a little bit about this mic, and it's that I have to sync audio in post-production if I'm gonna be using it for YouTube. However, I think if you have a special type of aux cord, you can hook it up right to the side of the Zoom H1N right here. It says line in right there. And if you plug that into your camera, it should record right onto your camera's audio track. But I'm not sure about that, so don't take my word for it. Anyways, this microphone cost me around 120 on Amazon when I first bought it, but I think you can find them cheaper around 100 bucks now. All right, we're done with the Zoom H1N, but I do have another microphone that I just bought and that's the Boya BY-MM1. Again, I can't show you this piece of equipment because I'm using it right now, but here's some more B-roll. Now I just bought this microphone about a month ago, so I haven't had much use out of this piece of equipment either, but for the most part, it's been pretty good. For the size and price of this microphone, I'm actually pretty impressed with the quality. Another thing I really enjoy about this microphone is that I don't have to sync audio and post anymore because this mic hooks directly to my camera, so it records directly onto my camera's audio track. One thing I don't really like about this microphone though are the cheap shock mounts that come with it. Um, I got two of them and within the first week I broke both. That one broke right there and then this one just busted the whole top off. So instead of buying another one of those shock mounts I bought the Rode Video Micros shock mount and that one's worked pretty well. Anyways, if you're looking to buy this mic, it cost me around 35 bucks on Amazon. Okay, next piece of equipment is my tripod and I use the Sunpack Travelite Pro. This tripod is made out of aluminum instead of carbon fiber and it's the only photo tripod I've ever owned. It's pretty sturdy and holds a good amount of weight, probably nothing like a 1DX, but in my case, a 6D Mark II with like a 24 to 70 on it should handle it no problem. It's also fairly light and it folds down small enough to where I can hang it on the side of my camera bag. As far as price, this thing cost me around 80 bucks when I bought it, but I think I got it on discount, so it might cost a little bit more now. Now the rest of the stuff in my bag are just small little items, so it's nothing too exciting. Anyways, we got my ND filter. This is a Tiffin filter. It's a 72 millimeter filter thread and it's a variable ND filter which means I can change the lightness and darkness of it. I am looking to get another one of these because this one doesn't fit on my 24 to 70 or 70 to 200, but this one cost me around 90 bucks. Next item are ooh, next item is batteries. I have two LPE 17 batteries. These both go to my Canon SL2 that I'm using right now. I, I don't have the other one because I'm using it in the camera. I do have three more batteries for my 6D Mark II, but I left those at home. Okay, now onto the next piece of equipment, which are these step-up rings. I have three of these, one, two, three, for three different lenses. Um, what these basically allow you to do is take my 72 millimeter filter and I can apply it to any lens that I have. After that, we have my knife. And this is just a cheap mossy oak knife. And I think I got this for Christmas, but you can get them from Walmart for pretty cheap. And I just carry it around with me just in case I have to cut anything or tighten down any screws. And finally, we probably have the most boring thing on the list, which are these two Allen wrenches. 
I bring these with me because my tripod legs are always coming loose and I need these to tighten them down. Oh, I actually forgot something. I also carry this with me, which is a lens cleaning kit. Everything included in this is just an air blower to get all the dust off the front of your lens and it has a brush on the front there too. Um, it also has a microfiber cloth, lens solution, tissue paper, and cotton swabs. All right, that pretty much wraps up my camera bag. Now this is just everything I carry in my bag at the moment. I do plan on changing things around just a little bit depending on the situation, as you should. But this is just everything I carry in my bag in general. But if I don't know what I'm gonna shoot for the day, I'm bringing this with me. If I'm gonna hurry out the door, I'm bringing this. I think you get the point. Also, I am looking forward to upgrading most of my gear, hopefully in the near future. I am happy with what I have. Trust me, I'm not complaining. Anyways, that's gonna wrap up this what's in my camera bag for 2021. If you enjoyed watching and would like to see more videos just like this one, subscribe by clicking right here. Thanks for watching and always remember to capture great moments.